The basic idea of color theory is that the way we see a single color depends on what the colors next to it are. For example, orange next to blue, like in this jacket, makes the orange look much brighter than the orange next to the red, as in the girl's legs. By the end of the 19th century, artists like George Seurat figured out that if you let your brain mix the separate colors we can see on the canvas, we would perceive something quite different than when the artist mixes the colors for us when applying them to the canvas. It's not that there is any physical or chemical reaction between different colors, it's really how our eyes and brain decode seeing different colors next to each other. Look at this famous work entitled A Sunday Afternoon at the Island of La Grande Jatte. It consists of millions of individual dots of paint, and when we zoom in, it may not make all that much sense, and perhaps looks a bit dull. But when seeing it from a bit further, our eyes will make sense of it, something called optical interaction or optical mixing, and it suddenly looks like an oddly luminous artwork, despite the relatively plain colors used. It was the development of a color wheel that helped artists understand this issue. Just pick two colors from opposite sides of the wheel. When you mix the two paints, the result is a relatively dull color. For example, a mix of bright orange and blue becomes brown, which is similar to what you get when mixing red and green, and also when mixing yellow with purple. And the reason is that they are opposites on the color wheel. But if you apply both colors separately, in close proximity to each other, the colors of both paints are intensified, they look brighter than when applied in isolation. So if you want to capture very bright colors, it's best not to mix the paint, but to apply them separately to the canvas. This new insight was perhaps not as useful in northern countries, where the natural light was much less intense compared to countries closer to the equator. So French artists moved out of Paris during the summer to spend a few months at the Mediterranean coast, where the light was much more intense, and the new knowledge of how to capture the bright lights and colors could be usefully applied. Look at this work from 1898 by Paul Signac one of the main proponents of using color theory. It is entitled Capo di Noli, a place on the Mediterranean coast. The goal of Signac was to create every area of the canvas to the absolute extreme in terms of color. Look for example at the tree from up close. It looks a bit like a mess, all these chaotic dots of color. But when we zoom out, we actually see a very luminous tree and that is because Signac combined predominantly orange and blue, colors on the opposite side of the color wheel that enhance each other. If he would not have used the orange but some shade of green instead, the tree would have looked relatively dull compared to its surroundings. The neo-impressionists used color theory to create their works. Using the academic knowledge on this subject, they would combine colors that would produce great luminosity. It was like looking at the color wheel and deciding that if you applied some dots of a certain shade of blue, which color would be at the exact opposite side of the color wheel. Now of course, you cannot really make a figurative painting by just using two colors. So, they would need to add other colors in between to make it actually resemble something realistic. Returning to the tree of Paul Signac, he mostly combines orange and blue to create a luminosity, but as a tree usually looks green, he added some patches of green as well. Now the combination of green and blue becomes rather dull, but green is still on the other side of the color wheel than orange and so the contrast between green and orange is still quite luminous. Some artists consider these academic theories to apply color to a canvas a bit too restrictive and sought to apply these ideas in a more intuitive way. Among them were the French artists Henri Matisse and André Derain. Henri Matisse had spent a summer working with Paul Signac and other neo-impressionists, which resulted in this famous work entitled Luxury, Calm and Pleasure. 
But Matisse wanted to look further than Neo-Impressionism, leading to an art movement called Fauvism, which lasted from 1904 till 1910 and included works like these. You can see the transition from using the individual dots of paint to using larger areas of color. The Fauvists were not really looking for realistic representations of the world, they were less interested in correctly creating the illusion of depth in their paintings and used the strong colors of the Neo-Impressionists in an unrestricted way. It becomes clear when looking at the careful touches of the brush the Neo-Impressionists like Paul Signac used. When we look at the rocks and the tree, we can clearly see some short vertical brush strokes, but when looking at the path leading up to the sea and the sea itself, the brush strokes are horizontal. And the sky is made using more diagonal brush strokes. From far away, this is not clearly visible, but the effect on our eyes is that we see clearly the different areas in the painting and it creates a feeling of harmony, which was the goal of Signac. The Fauvist rejected these careful brush strokes and things became more chaotic with larger areas of the same color. Like in this work by Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, leading to the even more abstract art movements in the years to come. Matisse summarized his Fauvist approach in a helpful way, emphasizing that color was the most important consideration. He wrote, I applied my color. It was the first color of my canvas. I added a second color. And then, instead of making a correction, when this second color did not seem to accord with the first, I applied a third to create such an accord. Then, I had to continue in this way until I sensed that I had created a complete harmony on my canvas and that I had discharged the emotion which had made me undertake it. And this painting of an open window nicely illustrates these thoughts, where he combines a variety of bold colors, capturing both the bright outside air and the cooler inside light into a harmonious composition. As with many styles of art, you don't necessarily need to like this painting, but it was an important new idea in the history of art, which is why Matisse is a well-respected artist today. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to color theory and the related movements of Neo-Impressionism and Fauvism. There's so much more to learn and discuss about these topics, so feel free to leave any questions and thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you want to support the channel, please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.